I recently noticed something unusual about the fight scenes across several films. For whatever reason, it looks like several of these fight scenes actually had different endings, and were later changed either in editing or in reshoots. Now, I really have no idea why these decisions were made, so if anybody has any insights, I'd love to hear them. First off, we have the ending of the Maul Obi fight. When Obi launches himself up out of the chasm, we see Qui-Gon's lightsaber fly from Obi's left, Maul's right. Now, in the next shot, we actually see that not only has his lightsaber switched hands, moving from his right to his left, Maul has also raised his right hand in the air in a very abnormal position. Nothing about this matches how he was standing when Obi initially made the jump. Now, I can think of only two possibilities here. Either they initially intended for Maul to be trying to catch the lightsaber before Obi did, or Maul was about to use force lightning or force throw a panel off of the wall to try to knock Obi down. Whatever the case, Ray Park is a very experienced stuntman and martial artist, and he would never have swapped his blade to the other hand and then raised his hand in this extremely odd position unless the filmmakers had instructed him to do so. So what was the initial intention here? Whatever it was, it's possible the original ending to this fight scene was very different than what we got. Next, we have the ending of the Obi-Anakin battle. This one is fascinating. It completely negates the entire reason Obi-Wan... <laughs> Obi-Wan. <clears throat> Look at the clip slowed down. Obi didn't have the high ground. When they originally filmed this scene, Obi jumped off the platform and Anakin immediately followed him. You can see both Obi's feet landing after a jump. He's not just turning around to face Anakin after he jumps. This entire epic battle actually had a completely different ending. Possibly still with the high ground being a factor, just not this high ground. The fight could have continued further up the mountain before they actually had the high ground line and Obi win the fight, which honestly would have made a lot more sense. Put Obi anywhere else in the landscape and the high ground line makes way more sense. And finally, we have the biggest change of all, the disappearing sword in the throne room. Watch this in slow-mo, and watch her reaction. This guard has another sword one second, and it disappears the next. And watch the motion of his arm, and picture what would have happened if he'd been actually holding that sword. As the sword crosses her body, it slices across her stomach. She responds by screaming in pain and nearly losing consciousness, the pain making her drop to her knees. The initial reaction from the audience is that the guard had her in an armbar forcing her to her knees, but this isn't an armbar. This is an armbar. Look at the difference in how the victim's arm is positioned. The guard isn't pushing her down, he's pulling her close to him so that her fighting arm is incapacitated. Then once she's immobilized, he stabs her in the back. So if she doesn't drop to her knees because she was put in an arm lock and forced down, why did she scream and fall down here? It's because this wasn't bad choreography, like many people have pointed out. This wasn't a mistake, she is sliced across the stomach and then stabbed through the lower back. And I'm not positive about this, but I'm suspecting they actually had different costumes for Daisy in this scene, much like they had for Obi and Anakin during their Mustafar duel. As the fight progresses, you see their clothes damaged over time, which adds realism. So Daisy likely changed into a different costume after getting stabbed which would have had a large cut mark across the stomach and then a stab mark in the back. And in this shot, you can clearly see some fragments of cloth and markings on the back of her belt that aren't there in the next shot. My guess is that these later scenes have CGI clothing overlaid on top of the cuts to hide them. Look at the way her leather belt looks frozen and unnatural, but in this later shot it actually flexes as she moves and breathes. This one doesn't look right because I think they filmed it with a large gash in the material and then fixed that gash in post. There is no doubt in the original cut of the film, 
Ray was supposed to be hurt twice, sliced across the stomach so painfully it makes her drop to her knees and then stabbed viciously through the back. Now, my guess is at this point, they rewrote the dialogue and refilmed the rest of the scene, taking out her falling down in pain after throwing the saber to Ben. And the rest of this dialogue was supposed to happen with her laying bleeding on the floor with Ben holding her. So they just reshot Ray's dialogue scenes and told her to act normal and they'd CGI out all the burnt clothing in editing. Never add in the glowing saber cuts and cross their fingers the audience would attribute Ray's screams and expression of pain to the guard putting her in an armbar. Now as to why they decided to go to all this trouble, the most logical conclusion is that while editing, Kathleen or Ryan or someone decided they didn't want to show their hero being hurt. And Ryan didn't want to or didn't have time to re-choreograph and reshoot the entire end of the scene with all the stuntmen and trying to recreate how messy the set was at this point in the fight. So the easiest thing to do was edit out the blade and pretend it never happened. But imagine how differently this scene would have played out. How much stronger of a character getting badly injured would have made her. She was supposed to be wounded and weak, yet still manage to fight Kylo to a standstill. Still wake up before him and escape the ship all while injured. Then, when we see her fighting later, She's not shouting with glee, but instead is grim and pale and sweating as she fights through the pain of her wound to be able to help her friends. It's interesting that one of the biggest critiques of Rey's character is that she's too perfect, and Ryan seems to have purposefully took out a beautiful scene that would have made her much more relatable and tougher for having to struggle through pain as opposed to never even experiencing it. Anyways, I've looked through all the fight scenes and haven't noticed any other discrepancies, but it's entirely possible I've missed something. So please look through the films yourself and let me know if you find any other fight scenes that seem odd. If you enjoyed this video, please help support me by sharing it. We're slowly making our way towards that 500 sub milestone. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you next time.